Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Friday. I hope you guys had a great week and that your weekend is starting off just the way you like it. I am freshly back. I've been home for about four days from my trip to New York. Um, as you guys know, I went to Book Expo America last week. That was, I flew on Tuesday. Flying from California to New York is an entire trip. It was a, it was a direct flight, but I left my house at about 7 to get to the airport, and I landed in my hotel room at 8.30 p.m. New York time on Tuesday. So I was basically traveling all day long. Um, Book Expo was Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it was amazing. So many books, so many authors. I got to meet the amazing Kendra and Autumn, Kendra Winchester and Autumn Privet of The Reading Women. You guys know Kendra as well from her booktube channel. They were fantastic. Um, I got to meet um, Matthew Sharapa finally. It seems like I should have already met him and he is just as great and energetic and fantastic as you guys think he is going to be. I met Robert from Border Barter Hordes um, and his channel. He is running the booktube prize. If you guys have not had a chance to go take a look at that, I highly recommend going and doing that. Again, I was with my dear, dear friends, the book cougars, Chris and Emily. I hope you guys enjoyed my last video with them. Um, they are just absolutely lovely people and um, they just they just take care of me. Uh, they're like family. So yeah, it was very, very great to see them. Um, after Book Expo is really like all day long. You get there at like nine o'clock in the morning and you do not leave until five o'clock. We would have dinner and then I would be in bed and um, couldn't even read. That's how exhausting my days were. Saturday, I got up and I started my day at Bryant Park. I took The Memory Police by Yoka Agawa to the park and I read it for a while. That was fantastic. I think Bryant Park is my favorite thing that I've ever done in New York City. I then got on the subway and went to the lovely uh, part Brooklyn, and I saw part Brooklyn. I, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but I saw Books Are Magic, which is an amazing bookstore. I met Danny, who is a fantastic bookseller, aspiring writer, um, and booktube watcher, and uh, she was great. I bought two books, which I'm going to tell you about today. I then came back and did a small tour of the New York Public Library. I really had to sort of keep myself contained because there was so much stuff I wanted to buy and bring home and I did not really have room for it. But the New York Public Library is gorgeous and so that was really worth the time. And then that night I went and saw Waitress the Musical, which was worth every penny. I was cracking up, I was crying, the singing, the everything was amazing. Um, Sunday morning I got up and I, what did I do Sunday morning? Oh, I went straight to the 9-11 Museum slash Memorial. Um, that is a fantastic, fantastic memorial. Um, full of utter heartbreak and tragedy, but also just a really great testament to the her heroism of, and, you know, sort of the steadfastness, steadfastness of the American people. Um, I was in tears for a lot of it, but I really felt that that was worth almost the entire trip in and of itself. If you get to New York, please go to the 9-11 Museum and Memorial. It is definitely worth your time. I then got back on the subway and wound up at uh, Central Park, spent some time there until I got rained on. Kind of called it an early Sunday because I was tired. I was very, very tired. Uh, Monday, I got up and did Bryant Park again, and then I uh, just ate some lunch, had to go to the airport, and it took me all night. My flight was delayed. Didn't get home until 11.30. Um, yeah, basically, I got up at 3 o'clock California time, 6 o'clock New York time, and didn't get home until 11.30 p.m. California time. So as you can imagine, I was an exhausted guy by the end. And then so I took Tuesday off really just to recover and do laundry. Um, and, and then I'm here today after three days of work, which I am definitely still recovering from. I am very glad, very glad it is Friday. So what am I going to be doing in the next few videos? You are going to get a few videos in a row for me over the next couple days where I'm basically going to just talk to you guys and share all of the books that I brought home from Book Expo America. Not a lot of detail, but just want to share with you guys what the experience is like, talk to you about maybe how I got some of the books, more about sort of how they came into being in my possession. There is a box here. I'm going to try to lift it for you. Oh my gosh, that is full of books. Um, that it was 52 pounds and it was a pretty penny to get it home. Um, but it is full of stuff that I cannot wait to share with you guys. And then we'll sort of turn it into 
a series of videos so that you guys get to see everything I brought home. Then on top of that, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to tell you about the books that I purchased and they wound up actually in my carry-on first um, because I think you guys are going to really like some of them. And some of them I just did not want to not bring home just in case this box didn't make it home. I wanted to make sure that these books made it here. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. I'm going to try to tell you about these books in very short amount of time because I don't want these videos to be too long, but we should get started. Let me tell you about the two books that I purchased at Books Are Magic in Brooklyn. The first book that I picked up is Disappearing Earth by Julia Phillips. Um, I want to say that this book has been on my radar for quite some time. This is the story of two young girls in a small town in Russia. Um, you learn very quickly in the beginning that uh, like Moscow is like a nine hour flight from where they are in Russia to Moscow. So they are very much on the outskirts of the country. These two young girls in the very first few pages are kidnapped and taken away. And this is basically the repercussions that that crime has on the community. It is a sort of kaleidoscope view of different people that are affected by this crime. Uh, the first section is about a young girl whose life is very much changed when, you know, everyone around her is sort of buckling down because of the fear of what this crime has sort of instilled in this community. Um, the sad story of this book is that this was the last thing. So I finished a book on the plane and I was starting Disappearing Earth and the flight attendant unfortunately spilt coffee slash water, some liquid mess all over me and on this book. And so my heart broke um, because it did actually ruin a couple of the pages that I was reading. But hey, as Julia Phillips told me when I tweeted about it, my book is now special to me. So that's Disappearing Earth by Julia Phillips, and this is out now from Knopf. You guys can go ahead and get your hands on it. I have a feeling that's right up a lot of your alleys. The next book I picked up mainly because of the reading women. I, we were talking books, as you can imagine, the entire time. But when I asked Autumn Privet what the best book that she had read so far year to date, she mentioned The Old Drift by Namawali Serpel, and I know I'm not probably saying that right, so I apologize. This is out now from Hogarth. This is an epic, epic family saga of four different, or three? Three different families, four generations, set in Africa just outside Victoria Falls in a little town or community called The Old Drift. This is from what I can tell. This is gonna be for fans of stuff like Kintu, um, or if you are a fan of Pachinko, where you're sort of following a family through time. I think this one is more, even more epic than Pachinko, because I think it's through four, it's through generations and generations versus just a family through time. Um, but Autumn Privet raved, raved about this book. I will say it is a chunkster. It is a heavy, heavy book. Um, but I think the cover is absolutely gorgeous. And when the reading women say this is a book that shouldn't be ignored, they are usually right. So this is The Old Drift by Nam Wally Serpel, and this is out from Hogarth. Okay, so those are the two books that I purchased for myself. Everything else I got at Book Expo from different publishers. I'll try to mention them all here. And they're all books that I just was so excited that I got my hands on that I didn't want to actually put in a box and maybe not get here. There you go. The first book is the um, first book of work of fiction by Tanahashi Coates, The Water Dancer. This is coming out from, hold on one second. Um, Penguin Random House. I wonder if it has an imprint. One World. This is coming out from One World. Let me just show you again that cover real quick. It's going to be gorgeous. Um, and it comes out 9-24-2019. Now, if you guys have not read Tanahashi Coates's nonfiction, which is um, Between the World and Me, the book that he wrote to his son, please do. It is a powerful, powerful piece of of work that is definitely worth reading. Now, this is a slave narrative about a young boy who is, um, him and his mom are slaves, and one day his mother is sold, and when she's sold, he's sort of robbed of all memory of her, um, and he is gifted with some sort of power. And one day when he has 
uh, he almost drowns in a river. This sort of power saves him, and he decides that he's going to flee the only home he's ever known. Now, um, I don't know much more about the book than this. I do know that Matthew Sharapa told me he was reading it while I while we were there, and that it is just as epically beautiful written. The first few paragraphs, which of course I flipped through, um, were just amazing. And so I have to have actually a huge thank you to the um, Book Cougars and Emily, because I could not find this book. And she's like, hey, I saw this. Did you want this? And I'm like, I want this. So again, this is Tanahashi Coates. This is The Water Dancer out from War One World out on 9-24-2019. And again, just take a look at that amazing cover. I'll try to unglare it for you. Okay. I'm starting a pile here. I hope that it doesn't get in the way. The second book was absolutely one of my favorite things that I ever did. You guys know that last year I met... No, I'm sorry. I picked up The Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. Uh, it was a YA title. It was one of the buzz book uh, buzz YA titles of them and I loved it I read it I've given it away a number of times as a gift absolutely think it's fantastic it's the first book in a series and this time I got the second book which is Girls of Storm and Shadow um, this is not the actual cover it has a beautiful cover um, again by Natasha Nagan and I got to meet her and take a photo with her and she is absolutely a adorable. She has a lovely, lovely French accent. And I just, and she said to me, she's like, Russell, this book in this, uh, French accent, a cute, adorable French accent, where she said, this one has queer boys, not only queer girls. This is the story of a world where in the first book, we have a group of women who are human. There are three different types of people. There are demons. There are people who are, um, gin, which are sort of demon human mixes. And then you have humans. Uh, a group of women are human women are then taken into the castle to be uh, consorts to the um, king who is a demon king um, and this is the story the first one is the story of one of those women and sort of her um, for lack of a better term rebellion against the status quo it's also a very touching love story I'm not going to tell you what this one is about because I want you to read the first one if you haven't read it but Meeting her was absolutely fantastic. This one is out from Little Brown. It's actually the Jim Patterson, uh, James Patterson imprint there. And it comes out on November 5th, 2019. So if you didn't read book one, you have plenty of time to do it. I highly recommend it. And then get yourself pre-ordered for book two because I, I, I'm not waiting till November. I'm just letting you guys know right now. I'm not, not. The next book that I picked up, I actually talked about if you guys have watched my video with the book cougars, and that is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I think Jacqueline Woodson is one of the great American writers currently writing, and she's so versatile. She writes picture books for children all the way up to adult fiction, which this is. If you guys read Another Brooklyn, that was an amazing adult fiction title. It was shortlisted for the National Book Award. She won the Children's National Book Award for Girl, Brown Girl Dreaming, which is in its own self, amazing. This is a book told in vignettes. Basically what it says is that this is the story of a 16 year old girl. She's on her 16th birthday. She's having the party and she's wearing a dress that her mother was supposed to wear, wear 16 years before on her 16th birthday, which never happened. It's the story of two families that are brought together by the birth of a child from two different socioeconomic classes and sort of how that all winds up working out. I don't need to know much more than that. I will say that I've read the first 20 pages and Jacqueline Woodson is a genius. Read at the Bone. This is out from Riverhead and I want to say it comes out in September. September 17th, 2019. And that cover, that cover is just stunning. I hope that remains the cover because I'm really a huge fan. One of the nonfiction pieces that was just the talk of Book Expo is the other book I mentioned in the Book Cougars video, and that's How We Fight for Our Lives, a memoir by Saeed Jones. Now, a lot of people know Saeed Jones from BuzzFeed. He did that TV show. Um, he was one of the hosts of AM to DM. I don't know if you guys remember that. I think if you see him, if you're in this world, you would recognize him. Um, this is the story of him as a young black queer man dealing with sort of that and the coming out. And I was interesting, I went, this is one of the adult BuzzFeed books of the year, which I'll do a whole video on for you guys in just a bit. Um, but the editor spoke to the fact that sort of at the, the time when Saeed was coming out, both as 
a recognition of his own blackness in his community, but also of his queerness in his world, was the years that Matthew Shepard passed away and there was um, brutal, um, a brutal death of a young black man that really affected and sort of gave substance to what Saeed Jones was going through. Um, I, this book is blurbed, mind you. This book is blurbed by Roxane Gay, Jacqueline Woodson, and Kiesi Limon, who you know I loved, loved his memoir, Heavy. Um, I think that this is going to be one of those books that tears our heart out in absolutely brilliant ways. I saw him. I should have gotten in line to get this signed. I don't know why I didn't. Um, hopefully he will come to the Bay Area and I will get to see him. This is How We Fight for Our Lives. This is out from Sh Simon and & Schuster and it comes out on October 8th, 2019. I think if you're into memoir, that's going to be one that you need to get on your radar. I picked up two um, middle grade books, actually. The first one is um, Pages and Company, The Book Wanderers by Anna James. Now, if you guys are a booktuber, a booktube fanatic, you will know Anna James. She has her own channel here on booktube. And this book is actually currently already out in the UK. It comes out from Philomel here in the US in September. I apologize, I don't know if I know the exact date in September. But I read this. This is what I read on that day um, on Tuesday when I was getting myself back into um, just getting back to the real world. Um, this is a charming book about a young woman, a young girl, girl who finds out that she and other people have the ability to talk to characters from books and wander into books. And she has a past. We learn very early on that her father and mother are missing. We don't know where they are. And she doesn't really know where she comes from. She, there's secrets to be told. But all of a sudden, she starts to be able to talk to characters from her favorite books. And then we find this whole world of libraries and bookstores and book travels. And, you know, there's a menacing character. It was absolutely adorable. It's exactly what I needed to get myself back into the scope of things regarding the real world. It just charmed the heck out of me. And I am so sad because I can't get book two because book one isn't out yet. But you guys, if you have a middle grade reader in your life, adult or child, someone who's looking for a new thing to dive into, please put down book uh, Pages and Company, The Book Wanders by Anna James. This comes out from Philomel, which is a subsidiary of Penguin, um, in September 2019 here in the US. If you're in the UK, UK, you can get it already. Go get it. It's adorable. I highly recommend it. The next one I got, I actually sort of on a whim as a book for my nephew, because I just think it sounds like something he would like, and that is Jinxed. This is by Amy McCulloch, and this is out from Source Books, I believe, and let me see if I can figure out. This doesn't come out actually until January 2020, but this is the story of Lacey Chu. She's a young girl. She has a dream to work for this engineering company that creates these, um, what are they called here? Um, they're called Baku, customizable pets with all the capabilities of a smartphone. It is her dream to work at this facility, and unfortunately, she does not get in. She's not going to work there. Then one day, she finds an old um, Baku in the shape of a cat, and she puts it back together, and somehow it gets her accepted into the school. But of course, not everything is the way you think it's going to be. I think that this sounds like a lot of fun. I think that they all have different types of these creatures, which just as like speaks to the young man in me that loved things where you had a special, you know, like a Damon from uh, the Philip Pullman novels or someone that you have like your own special sort of cat or owl, like Harry Potter, whatever. So this is Jinxed. This is by Amy McCulloch. This is out in January, 2020. And this is from Source Books. Also, that's gonna be fun. Last but absolutely not least in this video, see, 20 minutes, I couldn't do a whole box right now. I just wanna remind you guys of Well Read Black Girl by Glory Edom. Now, I got to see Glory Edom. She was on a panel about women in literature and the future and sort of the year of the woman that was 2018 and women writers and 2019 and how it's continuing and what does the future look like. It was a fantastic, fantastic panel. I was fanboying all over Glory Edom. I think she is amazing. She's so well-spoken and so smart. So I actually, they were giving out copies of her book that I actually got mine signed. 
This is a collection of essays by different um, African-American women writers from Jasmine Ward, um, Jasmine Ward, Jasmine Ward, Jasmine Ward to um, uh, Tiari Jones is in here. Congratulations to Tiari Jones for winning the Women Prize for an American Marriage. Um, uh, Morgan Jerkins is in here. There's just, there's so many amazing writers in this book. And it is a beautiful naked hardback out from Bloomsbury. I'm sorry, Ballantine. Why did I think it was Bloomsbury? Ballantine's book. It is just gorgeous, you guys. Gorgeous. So this is Well-Read Black Girl, Finding Our Stories, Discovering Ourselves. This is collected by Glory Edom of Well-Read Black Girl. And she is the Well-Read Black Girl book club. Follow her. Love her as much as I do. I think she's amazing. So that's quite a stack and we didn't even get into the box yet. So the next video, which will come up tomorrow, I will be doing them every day until this box is emptied for you guys. Um, I will actually open the box and we'll get started. So I hope all of these books wound up on your TBR and I hope that you are excited about them all just as much as I am. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that every one of these books winds up on your TBR or in your hands. Uh, make sure that you order them from your independent bookstore and or have your library pre-order them for you. As always, until next time, I wish you happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!